my decision to become an owner and being involved in ownership and in uh, construction, uh, I guess, grew from the fact that I always wanted more. And during the time when I was working with my tools, I used to do a lot of after hours work. And uh, so I was continually busy. I'd get off at 4.30 and be working on a uh, after hours job uh, by six o'clock and work till 10 and whatever. And so it developed into where I was working so many hours, I decided that one of two things needed to happen. And uh, that was either settle for less or go into business full time. And so uh, back in the early 80s, I entered uh, the uh, economy and made my first attempt at uh, being in construction ownership. Actually, when I was going to uh, school, I uh, was interested in athletics and, and that type of thing. And so I was thinking about coaching and teaching. And it was the fact that I had reached a supervisory capacity in construction by the time I had my junior hours in and to finish uh, school and teach and coach, I was going to take a significant cut and that at that time back in the 60s didn't seem like too good an idea to me. I suppose I was like a uh, good portion of kids growing up. Uh, I dreamed of being a professional athlete. Uh, I was a decent athlete. Uh, through uh, middle school and high school and played at a fairly high level, but it became evident that I didn't have the qualifications to move to the next level, and so uh, that's where it stopped. Well, my favorite sport is, is clearly uh, football. I uh, played a lot growing up, uh, had a reasonable amount of success growing up, and even uh, had an opportunity when I was in middle school to uh, play a sandlot game with Gail Sayers. So uh, uh, I still enjoy football today. Uh, it's just one of those things that you grew up with. Today I think it's America's game. That's basically why that I believe it's my favorite sport. The action, the hitting, the teamwork. Construction is very much like being on a football team and the fact that you have got a lot of positions, you've got a lot of plays, and everybody has to play their part and uh, be successful in order to come together. Uh, you have a quarterback, you have uh, running backs, you have blockers, uh, there's all kinds of, of things with project management, estimating superintendents and craftsmen. Uh, that all play a part and the projects can be successful without everybody doing their part. My probably favorite hobby uh, as far as individual is playing golf. Uh, don't play as much as I like and uh, when I don't play as much as I like I don't play as well as I like but I, I still enjoy it. Uh, I've got four grandkids and and right now my biggest hobby is is watching them play. I've got a grandson that's 14 that plays at a fairly high level, uh, both in baseball and football, and uh, two other grandsons that are just starting to play, and a granddaughter that's starting to play softball and some other things. So, uh, you know, golf, watching my grandkids, a little traveling, those are probably my hobbies. Well, clearly my most important mentor growing up was my dad. Uh, my dad was a professional athlete. He was a rodeo cowboy and he did uh, compete at a very high level. That's how he made his living. He taught me about what he called stick to and never giving up. He taught me uh, mental toughness as well, well as physical toughness. He was probably not my number one. And then I had a football coach, George Beisline, in, in high school it was our uh, head line coach that was a, a big mentor and, and he taught a lot of life lessons from the, the standpoint of football so those would be my two. Probably most like to uh, meet Harry Truman and uh, 
why I'd like to meet Harry Truman is because he held the highest office in the land and yet he treated it like it was a, a job that anyone else would have and he, he did it with dignity, common sense and the toughness. Uh, while he was a political figure, uh, he clearly held what was in the best interest of the country in the foreground. Probably the thing that I'm most proud of here at KBS is in my uh, taking part of building the team. Uh, we started in my basement. When my wife kicked us out of the basement, we started to expand and started to grow staff. Uh, we really did it with some key things in mind, looking for people with the right stuff. And, and over the 24 years we've been in business, uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of uh, holding those standards and trying to pick the right people. And once we pick the right people, trying to take care of them. So that's probably the, the biggest thing I'm proud of is the fact that I've had, had a part in putting, a, uh, assembling a good team. If I look into the future of KBS, I see a lot of things on the landscape. I think overall KBS is poised for good things in the future, but we've clearly got some challenges. The marketplace is ever changing. Uh, KBS is changing from the standpoint of the type of work we do, the type of work we target. When we opened our doors, we were targeted most on telecommunications. Today, we do a ton of manufacturing and manufacturing related type of work. And so, uh, you know, the thing that you have to be in tune with is where the marketplace is going, what your strengths are, and how you can leverage those strengths to be successful in that marketplace. And so, uh, you know, the, the fact that we've got a good staff here uh, gives us the ability to be flexible. And so I think in the future, uh, KBS is gonna grow, but I think KBS is gonna evolve into a company that's gonna be ever changing and uh, that will look uh, quite different five or 10 years down the road than we look today. Probably one of the things that uh, I bring to the company that's probably most valuable is my almost 50 years of experience in the industry. My strengths are going to be more in the uh, oversight and teaching role today than they are actually in day-to-day -day handling project management and estimating, but in, uh, in teaching and oversighting to make sure that I, I give the guidance that can help us be successful.